So the market is changing. The real estate market is changing. There's no doubt about it. And you're thinking about selling your house. Should you fix it up before putting it on the market? That's what I'm gonna talk about today. So stick around. Hi, I'm Annie and I'm a realtor in Silicon Valley. And yes, the market is changing. Is it all doom and gloom? Of course not, it's Silicon Valley. <laughs> I just did a post recently about the median home price across the country is like 450,000. Here in the Bay Area, it's 1.5 million. So it's still, there's so much money in this market. That's the good thing. But if you're thinking about selling, you want, still wanna get the most out of the house sale no matter what market is happening. And I'm here to say, even based on the stats, there are still some pockets that prices are still going up, but they're only going up when the house is a 10. So stick around to the end because I do have some great resources that I'm gonna give you for free. But let's talk about whether you should do anything to fix it up or just get it on the market as fast as you can and see what you're gonna get. So number one, yes, you need to fix it up. There, there you have it, that's the bottom line. You should definitely do something. Um, back in the day, you could just do the bare minimum and it would sell for a good price. Really careful about just doing something to fix it up to say there's fresh paint or new carpet or new light fixture or something just to say it's new and not do it right. Oh my gosh, you guys, that's my biggest pet peeve. I actually have a listing like this right now in Almaden Valley and the seller is an elderly woman. Again, I specialize in dealing with a lot of seniors and inherited property sales and whatnot. And she is just digging her feet in thinking that she has all the answers. She is, uh, she has a lot of investment properties. So over the years, she thinks that she's um, learned a lot and she is, she's, I just adore her. But when I told her what, what fixing up to do beforehand, she only took part of my advice and it's backfiring. She put in a bunch of money and it's really, it wasn't exactly what she should have been doing. Number one thing I tell clients, number one thing, is paint. We've got to neutralize the paint throughout the house, throughout the house. I know you might love your one wall that's really personalized and a color that you love, but you are not buying your own house again. We have to do it right for the for buyers. And there are sh shades that can hit or miss the mark. So please make sure you talk to someone that knows what they're doing, what buyers really like, okay? So number one, paint has a couple positive effects. The house will just look so much better with a neutral color throughout. And number two, it will smell better. It just brings a fresh smell to it. You don't want it to be too strong and fresh paint, but it just makes the whole house not only look better, but smell better, and it just feels cleaner. It's not all marked up. So that's number one, paint, 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 please, and get the right paint color. And just do the same color throughout the house. Don't try and be creative. Well, let's do this for the bedrooms or this, and just do one color. Again, we just want buyers to like it and have the house feel clean and fresh. Number two, flooring. Flooring, flooring, flooring. I cannot even tell you how many times the seller will say to me, well, the carpet's only a few years old, and it's not that bad. And I think it is that bad and you need to freshen up the carpet. Yes, it's an easy thing for a buyer to do before they move in. Here's the problem though, especially when the market is shifting like right now, buyers don't wanna buy a house that they have to put more money into. They're already worried that the market's gonna keep going down. So they're okay with paying for the house, whatever that is, two, $3 million house, but they're hesitant to put an extra 20, 50,000, 100,000, whatever it is into the house because I think, well, by next year, the value could even be less. And here I ended up putting more money in the house. So just get it done for them. Make sure any carpet is fresh, clean. You don't just get the carpet professionally cleaned. I know that can help a lot, but I'm just telling you the cost of new carpet, especially a lot of times it's just in bedrooms is significant in terms of getting the buyer to jump to write the offer. And that's what we're here for. In a, in a down market, you've got to eliminate the excuses why they wouldn't do it. So flooring, new carpet, not just professionally cleaned, new carpet. And if there's something significant, especially in the entranceway with flooring, whether it's an old linoleum or old tile, you really want to make sure the entryway looks fantastic. So if you gotta rip up some tile, 
You know, some people, they can even have like laminate flooring put over tile, depending on what kind of tile to keep costs down. But make sure the flooring looks great, especially in the entrance way, but get rid of any old carpet. Okay, so we've got paint number one, flooring number two. Sometimes you can keep some flooring and just update parts of it, but make sure you have an expert explaining when you can and can't do that. And then number three is the kitchen. So I know people don't want to spend too much money. You don't want to do a huge remodel, but I'm telling you sometimes either changing out just the countertops or changing out the uh, cabinets. Even if you can just paint the cabinets and put new hardware on, sometimes you can get away with just new hardware. So I'm not here to say just throw money at you know remodeling again. That's not what I'm here for. But it's surprising sometimes you can just change the countertops just the hardware or maybe just paint. You don't know if you do all, all of those. Um, so that really helps. Number four, I would say is some light fixtures. And light fixtures really don't cost that much. So it's not gonna, so don't think that, well, Annie, I, I don't wanna do much in the kitchen and I'm willing to just do the entrance way, but I'm not gonna update the carpets, but I will change some lights that's probably not going to be enough. So that's why lights is number four. It's kind of lower on the list. But if you're really, really trying to get a quicker sale with top pricing, really address the flooring, the paint, the kitchen in some way, uh, light fixtures being four. And then number five is the curb appeal. So let's clean up that front yard, get rid of juniper bushes, people. No juniper bushes. I've got some guys that can rip them out. Just put some mulch and a few plants. It just really freshens up uh, the, the yard. And the curb appeal, again, you're setting the stage for people to walk in. And there are really inexpensive ways to do some of this, but have a big impact. So again, make sure you're really thinking about, first of all, where you're sourcing some of your materials, the colors, uh, what really comes first in your house. Maybe it's really the kitchen. Maybe the paint was done you know, two years ago and it really is pretty neutral and great. Maybe you could just do a little touch up here and there, but really let's address the kitchen. Let's do it, right? Are my top tips, and it's a down market, make sure your house really does feel like someone can move in and not have to do a lot of work because people don't want to pay much for a house knowing they still have to do work, knowing the markets might have some room to go down. So avoid those excuses. So now to my awesome tips I have. So I have three tips. If you don't have the funds to get some of this done, and sometimes it could be as little as $10,000, which I know still can be a lot, but $10,000 to maybe make you 50 to 100,000 more in the sale price. If you don't have that money, three ways to get it. One, it's kind of a little bit longer and, and time consuming, but a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. That can take it maybe two months, depending on it. But even if your interest rate is a little higher, you're gonna be paying that whole loan back as soon as the house sells. So it's worth it, even if you're getting a higher interest rate. You're not holding the money for very long. You're not borrowing it for very long. HELOC. Number two, there's a company called Curbio, C-U-R-B-I-O, Curbio, that gives homeowners loans during this time. You don't have to pay anything up front. You have to use their contractors, though, so their contractors might be a little bit pricey. But then when the house sells, they get paid back. Everyone, or everyone gets paid out of the house sale, so there's no money up front. There is a pretty easy qualifying process. You can talk to me because it's usually better to go through a realtor. Uh, and number three, me. I can be a, a bank for my clients and I get paid out of the clothes. So yeah, I'm probably the easiest of all those options to get some money, but you gotta use me as a realtor, but I'm good, so it would be a win-win. Anyway, don't listen to the media. Don't get all stressed out that it's doom and gloom in real estate. It's not. We're still doing great here in the Bay Area, but buyers are being extra cautious. They really don't want to have to do too much work after they spend a lot on a house that they're, they're concerned too where the market's headed. So make sure you talk to an expert. Comment below if you have any questions. Never hesitate to reach out. And until next time, have a great one.